I wasn't handcuffed, uh, but I was treated like a criminal. I have to defend my religion, but uh, I was a young kid uh, without any uh, knowledge about how to debate, probably. Uh, I remember I say uh, to one of the girls that you need to be stoned because you're talking uh, shit about my religion. And uh, yes, I shouldn't say that, but I didn't know that time. The high school turned to us with a concern that there could be a serious case, perhaps a school shooting or something like that uh, being planned. So the police went into the case and we had a concern from Mohammed. We arrested him uh, and a number of things happened in uh, Mohammed's life uh, so that he decided to go in a radical direction. My mother died from heart attack the same summer. Uh, so it was another slam in the face. and. So I became more religious and hanged out in the mosque uh, and uh, I met a guy who I know that he was more religious than I am uh, and he introduced me to a group of guys in an apartment. Uh, there were Somalis and Arabs and then I told them my story and they were in tears and warm and they welcomed me very good. It was like that brotherhood I never had uh, in the society. He was quite affected by what has happened and he decided to go in uh, perhaps that he, he would go to Pakistan to uh, some kind of religious education, as I recall it. And in that period, uh, we called him and invited him into the program. And we had, uh, it was a little bit difficult to make him come here. However, uh, what we saw, uh, he accepted that he would come. And we introduced him to one of our very skilled mentors, and he went into our mentoring program. And I was like, what? Why? I mentioned just a, a Muslim guy like you, you can talk to, maybe you can figure something out. And I remember in my mind, I, I was thinking, who is that snitch? <laughs> and that's why actually in the first, I went to the meeting to see who that snitch was. And yeah, and it became the beginning of a friendship. He's kind of a role model because he's an educated lawyer, he, he's, he has a house, he has a family, he has everything, he, and he has a job. And I was like, how can he do it and you can't? <laughs> uh, why, are you, why are you fleeing when you can actually achieve something bigger? Well, we saw a young man who was very open to go into the mentoring program and we have also seen him develop very quickly. He is a very bright young man. And uh, our recommendation to him, go get a life, go get an education. He had life, he had an education, he was also married. And when he uh, had finished his mentoring program and he came to us, he'd say, well, I think uh, what I have been through is a very good experience for me. I think I would be good at advising young men in the same situation as mine. I would like to become a mentor. And then we had invited him to uh, have a mentor education, and uh, sometimes in the near future, he will become a mentor for a mentee. I never thought about do something else for other people, you know, contribute to my country and contribute in a way that I can help them with something. And as a Muslim, as a religious person, I, I know that doing good for other people will benefit you also. If you get a citizen to be product productive in our society. He pay taxes, he be part of the society, and yeah, he contribute to society. But if you make him hostile and uh, put him in jail for, let's say, 20 years, uh, he never get a chance to contribute. 
he would just be a cost forever for our society. This is not either a soft methods or hard methods. This is both. And if these guys has committed crimes and we can prove that they have committed crimes, they will be sent to jail and prosecuted. However, in most of these cases, it's impossible for us or any other um, department that could investigate these things in Denmark or in the Western Europe or in Canada to prove they have committed crimes. We would rather care for them than we would leave them alone. Because if we left them alone, the risk that they might commit serious crime or even terrorist attacks here would rise. And that's also one of the quite basic things which we do, which is very important. Talk directly to the ones who are in the target group. Try to act respectfully and build trust. When you can talk to them in a rational way, it comes actually to winning the hearts and minds of those individuals. Because we have nothing to hide. We just want you to live a happy life with your family.